What's up guys, today I'm looking at a 2016 Dodge with a Cummins 67 in it. Um, I have a code here, UO10C, loss of communication with turbocharged control module. Um, there's also another code that comes up uh, in these applications that's a 226 code. If the 226 code comes up, this does not apply to you. Um, this code actually is in reference to a turbo actuator. We're gonna take a look at replacing that right now. Here we have a turbo actuator off a 6.7 Cummins. This is a stock setup. This is the failed part. We have coolant that runs through here. Uh, today we're gonna to be trying a new product that's on the market from City Diesel. It's a turbo actuator that comes in two parts that we're gonna be putting together and installing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it together, show you guys where it's at and how to do it. Supposedly you don't have to calibrate this one. So we're gonna take a look at that and see how that works for you. All right guys, I've put together this turbo actuator here and first, uh, First impression is it looks like a decent quality made part. Um, we had to assemble it here with the gasket on the inside, added the gaskets here. And real quick, I just wanted to talk about why these things fail. Um, they have a little motor inside here that turns this gear. And when the turbo gets uh, a little bit older, it has carbon built up in it from not running the exhaust brake enough. And um, just gets older this motor starts to burn out when this motor burns out there's actually a um, a computer chip inside here that will get burnt out and send the code once that code hits the, the PCM or ECM will tell the engine to that there's a fault here and it'll shut down other things in your uh, uh, engine so that's basically why in order to prolong this you could always keep the engine brake on and it will burn the carbon out of the turbo so you don't have this issue um, or at least it'll help uh, prolong your actuator so let's get putting it on all right guys now we've removed the tire we've removed the inner fender well and here's a turbo actuator here we have five or four five millimeter bolts allen heads that go on top and bottom to remove this actuator and one 10 millimeter screw bolt right here to remove the wire harness and this will come out uh, this does have coolant in it and it will leak all over the floor so either dump your coolant first or be prepared for a mess um, little trick uh, the bottom left hand allen go ahead and get that one out first loosen it first because that's the hardest one to get to then the rest will come easy Going back together with the actuator, you're going to have to put that bolt in the actuator upon mounting it, or else you won't be able to get it back in. So just make sure you're aware of that. This bolt in here will not come out unless this, all three of the other bolts will, are loose and the whole actuator comes out. So a um, little trick of the trade right there. All right, guys, once you get the turbo actuator out, um, this is kind of what it looks like here. What you want to do is you want to give it a push both ways. Make sure it moves freely. Um, if it doesn't move freely, then your turbo is probably no good. After moving it, um, I have this little alignment tool that I got from another one. Push it inside, and it lines up with a pin in the back. So you want that to line up correctly with that pin before you install the new actuator. Once you've made sure that that moves back and forth freely, and then you line up the dowel pin inside there, um, you go ahead and clean the gasket around and install the actuator. All right guys, now that we got the actuator installed, um, a couple things I did notice. 
there is a longer harness that connects. Um, there's a little bracket here that you can put this wire into. Uh, I went ahead and ran mine down the side, gave the extra loom. I like to keep the uh, connector wires straight. So I made the loop here, um, and then I had the connector straight right here. Uh, that way it doesn't kink or bind. So um, I went ahead and stretched that all the way here. But uh, that's the actuator installed. I'm gonna go ahead and install the rest, put some coolant in it, run it, and see how it does. All right, so now that we've hooked it up, we have the ECM, which is a top control module. Um, I cleared the codes and it says pass no fault. So that seems to have worked. Let's go ahead and start it up. And we have no more check engine light. So, uh, honestly, I'm going to assume that we did not have to calibrate this one. It looks like it's doing exactly what City Diesel said it was supposed to do. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and check for codes one more time. And there you have it. ECM engine control module, pass, no fault. So I got a headlight out I gotta do on that. But uh, yeah, this thing looks like um, it requires no calibration. So you're able to do it inside your, you know, in your garage at home with this little OBD2 scanner that you could clear codes on. It should be great. Okay. Now that we got the city diesel turbo actuator in, I drove the truck about 30 miles and everything seems good. Um, it did self calibrate like they claim. Uh, the truck ran great. Uh, a couple things to remember when doing this job, you're gonna need about four gallons of coolant. You're gonna need a five millimeter socket, uh, Allen head to remove the turbo actuator. You're also going to need a few other things, um, seven millimeter socket for the inner fender well and uh, 21 millimeter, 22 millimeter uh, socket to remove the tires. Just the basic hand tools for the rest of that stuff. But um, if you follow the directions that I provided for you, I think you guys will be successful. Uh, I didn't drive the vehicle after we changed the turbo actuator to see if the fault goes away on its own. But I cleared mine with the computer. If you don't have a computer, a lot of places like AutoZone or Napa, they will clear it for you. Um, hope we got something out of this. If you did, please like and subscribe and wait for the next one. Take care.